So we pulled the Chevette motor out because it was kind of down on power even for a Chevette motor. And it turns out my theory had been true ever since we got the car is the last owner didn't put the timing belt on, right? It was off about three teeth on the uh, cam, or I would say about 30 or 40 degrees on the crank, depending how you look at it. The whole problem is from this wonder over here. Wait, not over there. There it is. This is the timing cover that was on the motor. And right about here, there should be an ignition timing mark that was missing. Don't know what happened to it. I don't really see any place where it's missing on here, like it broke off or anything. But over here, we have the correct piece that I got off another motor. And there's your regular little GM sheet metal timing tab. And the way you set the timing on these shrimp motors, as far as time belt timing, is you line this thing the top dead center, which is right about here, on the crank pulley. And then you just wander over here to the cam setup. This cam uh, carrier thing that Chevette's have have a little hole in the pulley here and you line this up you put a nail through it it goes through a hole in the sheet metal or this cam carrier here and when you do that and you have the uh, motor atop that center according to that timing mark everything's set well like I said this thing was about three degrees advanced which would make sense to why this thing had no top end power the problem we were having was the motor would not rev over about 4,000 rpm you could have it neutral and just hold your foot to the floor and it still wouldn't go over 3,000. And everyone that seems to be making, and you all know, say the word power loosely with these cars, they're revving them to the moon. So that's the first step in this. And before we pulled the motor, we did a compression test on it. And cylinder 3 was down to 90 PSI. Cylinder 4 was 120. And then cylinder 1 and 2 were at 150. Not knowing the history of the motor, I decided to just kind of pull it apart. Well, it turns out the uh, motor's actually completely rebuilt. Here are the pistons here. Focus. There we go. Uh, has sealed power pistons in it. 60 over, or 1.50 millimeter if you prefer that. Look how short the freaking rods are. Anyway. 474P, 1.50 millimeter. And I'm just going to go with the fact that date code is probably an 09 that this was built. So this thing wasn't sitting very long before we got it. Probably doesn't have many miles in this rebuild. Bush would have known that before I honed it. I didn't clean the pistons off till after I honed it. I probably just could have thrown these back in with the same rings. But now that there's a fresh hone on it, I don't really think that's a good idea. Here's the bottom end of a Chevette motor if you're ever curious to see what one looks like whole like front cover comes off and the whole crank area is open. You can see it's pretty clean inside. Now sideways here. Um, I'm already sure of all the date codes here, but I checked and this seems this AO86 is a 1986 motor. So how did it end up in a 77 car? Eh, it's probably a mystery. And here's the cylinder head, which also looks, you know, pretty clean, minus whatever dirt it got on it, but it's not all, I don't know, crummy or sludgy. I don't want to flip it over, because it's freaking filled with oil, and I made that mistake once. But this has the heart-shaped chambers, so this is actually an HO motor. And although these are higher horsepower stock than the other motors, the other cylinder heads actually rather preferred the open-chambered heads because they actually flow a lot better at high RPM. But this is what we have, so this is what we'll work with. If you want to laugh at some tiny Chevette parts, there's a Chevette clutch. Oh, look at that. The date on it. But anyway, not too big there. And here is the Chevette radiator which as you can see is not much bigger than a gallon paint can.